It is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. I am truly grateful to the people of Ekiti for being the instruments through which this divine mandate has been given. And it is my solemn promise to do right by my people and honor that oath as God helps me. Never again. As much as today marks the beginning of a new phase in our history as a people, it also signals the end of an era, or more appropriately, the end of an era. Without a doubt, Ekiti has been through a horrible wilderness experience in the past four years. Our reputation as a people has been solid, and we have become the butt of jokes due to the crass ineptitude, loquacious ignorance, and ravenous corruption masquerading as governance in our state during the past administration. As we assume office, it is our duty, and we will live up to it, to ensure we thoroughly review, document, and widely disseminate the present state of affairs so that all and sundry can know what has become of our commonwealth. Independently verifiable preliminary findings indicate that we have been plunged into a debt as this of over 170 billion naira with commitments to innumerable white elephant projects, an average of eight months salaries owed across government entities and many state assets unaccounted for. We will ensure that within 100 days from today, a Kitikete will know the true position of things in keeping with our ethos of transparency and accountability in government. We are not interested in trials by media, witch hunting, or playing to the gallery. We will seek out the truth and lay it before our people. As I have said time and again, my coming back to office is not a revenge mission, but rather a healing balm on a painful wound. However, as the events of the past four years go into the history books, we owe it a duty to ourselves and generations coming after us to work together to ensure that never again shall we be deceived into making such a grievous mistake that has set us back so steeply on the development curve. Certainly, we will not all belong to the same political party, nor share the same ideological belief, but the reins of leadership in the Kitty State must never again be allowed to fall into the hands of those who do not understand what governance or development is all about. Never again should we give up free and qualitative education for accrued fees and taxes levied on our school children. Never again should we give up free health care and functional hospitals for a total neglect of our health sector. Never again should we give up integrated infrastructural development for bridges that lead to nowhere. Never again should we give up a burgeoning tourism sector and a revitalized Ecogosi Warm Spring for decrepit structures now overrun by reptiles. Never again should we give up the peace and unity of our state for increased crime rates and general insecurity. Never again should we give up transparent and accountable governance with the requisite checks and balances of independent, judicial, and legislative arms of government for draconian one-man shows. Never again should we give up our reputation as a honorable and knowledgeable people to be known as apostles of stomach infrastructure. 
never again shall we sacrifice prompt payment of salaries for indulgence in pursuance of projects of minimal benefit to the people. Never regain, never regain. Yet, from the ashes, we rise and shine as we look towards the light, the light of knowledge and intellectualism that we're known for, which illuminates our minds and reflects in the good character and pristine values we hold dear. These are the same values that have been eroded in recent years, which we seek to restore. Indeed, our mission to reclaim our land and restore our values was not only the slogan of our campaigns, but a clarion call to all to embark on this journey with us. Today, as we have reclaimed our land, we are now at the cost of charting the course of sustainable development out of the quagmire that we find ourselves in. In this task, we are faced with a number of threats and challenges, yet blessed with an immense amount of strengths and opportunities. My vision for our great state is that this is a place where people can thrive and live their lives in dignity, a place where workers do not labor in vain, a place where our young people do not roam the streets looking for jobs that are not there, a place where our people are not so hungry that they resort to pilfering food to survive, a place where the cycle of generational poverty can be broken and in which our elderly can reap the fruits of their labors over their children. A place where people are safe, healthy, and prosperous. The governance agenda of this administration is therefore compelled to focus on four areas through which we will deliver our promises to the people. The four pillars of our administration will be agriculture and rural development, social investment, infrastructure and industrial development, and entrenching the knowledge economy. Our greatest resource remains our people. As the great sage, Chief Obafemi Awolowo insisted, human beings are the measure of all things. Only a healthy and enlightened people can drive the sustainable development we want to see in Equity State. We therefore remain committed to instituting the social safety net that will bring succor to the most vulnerable segments of our society. Our example of such safety net is the social security scheme for the elderly, which I am pleased to say will be revived shortly. Our ideological position remains that no individual in society should be left behind, but everyone should be supported to live out their dreams to their fullest potential in their youth and have a dignified and comfortable retirement in their old age. This is the fundamental responsibility of any government and in this regard, I am particularly pleased that many of the programs we pioneered in our first time in office between 2010 and 2014 have been adopted and scaled up by our party-led federal government under the social investment program. We will work to ensure more of our people are beneficiaries of these programs. Likewise, delivering qualitative health care is a priority for our administration, and we will ensure our hospitals are once again well-equipped and functional to attend to the needs of our population. Knowledge economy. Equity State is known as the fountain of knowledge. Our people love, seek,
and celebrate knowledge. We arguably have the highest number of professors and academic pioneers per capita in Nigeria. We also have many of our citizens who are leading light in every field of human endeavor, as well as those who are at the frontiers of research in the academia and scholarship all over the world. This is therefore a logical choice to turn to knowledge as the primary product in which we can create successfully. To survive and thrive in today's global economy, as a Kiti people, we should be committed to using our brilliant mind to promote sustainable development. We will pay attention to fields such as teaching, research, skills development, creative arts, vocational education, strengthening our tertiary institutions, and educational entrepreneurship. To this end, my administration will resuscitate the Ekiti Knowledge Zone, which was established during my first term in office. We will also be counting on the input of Ekiti people everywhere in our efforts to establish the critical linkages in our knowledge economy, infrastructure and industrial development. The advancement of Ekiti State's economy is pivotal to wealth and job creation for the citizenry of the state. This is crucial and relevant to the poverty eradication and revenue enhancement mission of this administration. In order to further advance our economic and industrial revolution in Ekiti State, and in furtherance of, of our commitment to job and wealth creation, we will revisit the commercial and technical viability of abandoned projects and schemes in the state with a view to reactivating them. These include our vast networks of roads, our many community-based projects, and our flagship tourism asset, Ikogosi Warm Spring Resort. We shall also carefully take on new infrastructural projects that will be strategic in advancing economic growth and industrial development in our state. In order to guarantee sustained operation of commerce and industrial enterprises within the state, the government is required to create a secure environment. An integrated network of security infrastructure will be put in place to ensure it is once again the safe and secure haven for local and foreign direct investment. This will enhance the inflow of foreign and local investment into the state. Agriculture and rural development. It is essentially an agrarian society with soil properties conducive for growing a wide variety of crops. In order to achieve sustainable food security, create employment opportunities, and foster agro-based <coughs> industrial development for poverty alleviation and wealth creation. The approach must change from the current focus on farming and agriculture as a government social service to a commercial and private sector driven approach, which is now called agribusiness. And I'm glad that my brother, the dean of the Federal ministers who is in charge of agriculture, Chief Audio is here, and he has given his word that he will support our work in this direction. <laughs> we are therefore adopting a sustainable and commercial value chain approach, which will lead to transformational agribusiness development that can enhance food and personal security, create employment opportunity, empower women and youth reduce poverty, and create wealth through viable agro-allied industrial development. Beneficiaries of YCAD should be assured that YCAD is coming back in full steam. Our youth in commercial agricultural development. Let us come together. Ekitikete, four years ago, in conceding defeat, I'm promptly inviting the candidates of the opposing party to a meeting, despite the irregularities that marred the election and the bitterly divisive politics that preceded it, as well as the questionable conduct that we all witnessed. I established a tradition 
of smooth transition in the Kitty State, for which we became a model.